States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now call this uh, February 19th evening meeting uh, to order. We have a representative from the uh, auditor's office. There's not here. We have all three commissioners and the county attorney present. <coughs> First on the agenda, we have our uh, warrant. Okay. there since 2011 on old 31 here and we've expanded there over the years and we've also we also have a location in Allen County specifically Woodburn Indiana and a location in North East Elkhart County um, and when we added those outside locations it also is causing growth in Golden County because we manufacture a lot of things here that we don't manufacture in our other locations so in 2019 we expanded here and now we want to expand again primarily to add some roll forming capacity and uh, the the existing building that's up on the hill in the back there would would become a, a trim a complete trim shop we now manufacture panels and trim and you can ask me about this terminology if you have questions but this new addition would just be a panel shop allowing us to expand our trim shop because we manufacture a lot of <coughs> trims for our other locations so um, as a couple years ago we were here and talking about that that expansion in 2019 and about the employees and they always ask me in these meetings you know how many people do you think you're going to hire and I always take a conservative approach and I think when we look back at the numbers we, we doubled the numbers that we had presented that we thought we might hit so I think the numbers that we're presenting are conservative for the amount of people that we might hire but I'd rather present a conservative number than present something that is not attainable. Um, so the primary reason for the building and the new equipment is to give us expansion to support our other locations because we don't want all that equipment in all locations if that makes sense. Any questions about that? Yeah. Impressive. I see you got 104 employees and the average pay is $45,000 for the year. Yeah, the 45 is for the shop area. Um, yeah, I never thought we would expand to that level either. So the county has been good to us, and we really appreciate that. It's been, you know, I didn't start here because I thought this would be a great place to be, but it's a great place to be. So. <coughs> We appreciate everything you do. Yeah. Thank you. So on the business side of things, we have a We have one Sorry. question. If Steve, Steve, did you have a question? Yeah, you got the 104. Is that how many you're adding, or how many we're going to add to what you are your existing employees? Well, we're going to add 500, but no, that's our existing employee <laughs> count. Okay. <laughs> you have a rough idea how many you're planning on adding? Well, we're saying five to seven a year, but and that's what we said last time. But it's been more like 15 to 17. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. On the business side of things, as Marvin said, we petitioned for a tax abatement in 2021. And as part of that process, the county established the area um, where Ramco is located as an economic revitalization area, which just means that they're eligible for tax abatements. That area has never been rescinded or canceled, so it's still in existence. So we do not need the county to redesignate that area. 
we're just asking for your blessing on both abatements that we filed. One is the real property, one is the personal property. Both can max out at 10 years, and that's what we're asking your blessing for. You can even look at the last few pages in the packet that I gave you tonight. There is a um, document for everybody to sign, and if you want to take a vote on how you guys feel about blessing those abatements, we appreciate it. So I mean, this is just a courtesy, basically, for the commissioners because it's it's a council uh, process. But um, to sign, you have the recommendations here on the third to last page. You don't have the uh, the years in there. Is that? That's intentional because it's your choice what you recommend. We're okay. asking you to recommend ten years for each, but it is your choice. Okay, but that's uh, so basically we're we're just giving our blessing and and signing it and turn it turn it over to the council and to sign it or whatever. Yeah. Right. That's right. Kind of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, you know, I, I appreciate the hard work you have put into building that business model, and I, I purchased stuff off you, and I understand it's, it's a lot of work, and it's been great for our community, and, and it's, uh, we appreciate it. So, uh, I would, uh, I guess, entertain a motion to uh, to approve this as presented and send it to the council for their. Discretion, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. Any other questions for Martin or us? All in favor? Motion carries to you. Can I just get you guys to sign one copy mm -hmm. of that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need these back? You want these for tomorrow night? Yeah. Oh, might as well not kill another tree. That's right. That's right. <laughs> We've got them, I think, on the email. Yes, I think you did. Yeah, so I know a little too long. Spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and properly placed in new homes quickly. 
Uh, many of you know about our low-cost vaccine clinic, which opened in May of 2021. So we're going on year four of that. That is a vaccine clinic we hold at our facility. We have um, part-time relief veterinarians that come in and do that for us. Uh, in 2022, we saw 435 dogs and 267 cats through our vaccine clinic. That's a total of 702 animals, profiting 20,000. In 2023, we saw 662 dogs and 309 cats through a vaccine clinic for a total of 971 animals, profiting $30,000. So any profit made from our vaccine clinic goes into our shelter um, programs. Uh, our vaccine clinic is going very well. We just hired our third part-time veterinarian to consistently have clinics every two weeks. Uh, last year, we were doing it maybe every three to four weeks. So we're uh, doing it more often because the need is definitely there. We're typically booked out about a month in advance. Um, and we're also looking into possibly doing some cat spay neuter days at our facility. So instead of utilizing the low cost spay neuter clinics, which are up to an hour and a half away, we're trying to bring more of the business form of surgeries here in Fulton County. Um, I've got a meeting with our two vets next week actually to look into that. Um, we're going to focus on cats only. We're going to start with shelter cats and possibly open it up to the community in the future. Uh, other news, we just received a $12,000 grant from PetSmart Charities to hire a part-time staff member. We have an off-site adoption location at the PetSmart in Warsaw where we adopt out approximately a third of our cats, so that's a very important place for us. Um, so this staff member will be responsible for transporting the cats to that facility, um, keeping all those cages full so we can increase our cat adoptions. Uh, how we further help our community, we have a pet food pantry that continues to be a huge need in our community. We serve about 40 different homes a month, um, probably 80 to 100 animals a month. Our volunteer program is likely the largest in Fulton County. We host school groups, community service. Um, we just partnered with the uh, JCAP, the Jail Chemical Addictions Program, and we have our general volunteers. So we have about 25 active and ongoing volunteers and probably 75 to 100 volunteers through our doors annually. And we have discounted adoption programs for seniors and veterans. <coughs> and I just wanted to take the time to thank you for supporting our organization. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you for what you did. Thank you. Yep. Okay, yeah. Amy Rowe. Okay. Good evening, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Okay, I am here on behalf of Fulton County Hope. Um, I just wanted to take a couple moments. Um, we have updated our strategic plan for the next two years. Wanted to make you aware of some projects, so the list is there. Um, just kind of going down the list, um, we are for goal one and two, um, but we are looking at it. this. Um, most likely will actually be executed next year, but due to the increased rates in suicide in Fulton County and some other just challenging mental health um, issues that we feel like the world in general has produced. Um, Becky Clark, who is foreseen health on the board member as our mental health advisor, suggested that we host um, some mental health chats mm. to provide awareness to the community related to subjects like depression, anxiety, um, the uh, seasonal affective disorder, and other topics, which will be hosted most likely at the library and open to everybody free of charge, just to help folks to maybe navigate through those topics as well as maybe understand some resources to the community that are available through 4C Health. Um, most likely the individuals who will present at those meetings will be individuals who either work for 4C Health or individuals that are in partnership with them. Um, the Substance Use Symposium will then most likely be at the back side of that. Um, the goal for that will be to bring the, uh, the jail as well as um, other organizations such as Celebrate Recovery, Recovery <coughs> Cafe, um, churches, pastors together to discuss if we are fully engaging the whole um, substance use community <coughs> and if we're meeting the needs that need to be met um, and that we're being effective in doing that. Um, so we're looking at that. Most of those will probably happen in 2025. We want to take the time to really 
prepare and plan those and, and make sure they're effective. Um, goal number three, brick and mortar wraparound services. We probably named that wrong, but it was just a name that we used to have that we came over with um, from a previous uh, strategic <coughs> plan. Talk to the Community Foundation about that today. Um, what that specific project looks like is we recognize that through the help of all of the partners with HOPE that we have provided the opportunity for individuals to understand resources, connect those with those effectively, um, and to be able to partner to, to provide for those individuals. But we are not seeing the numbers that we had hoped with individuals coming out of poverty. So folks are still struggling with um, the cycle of poverty. And so we have researched the opportunities that other communities are using to address that. One of them is what is called a self-sufficiency program. It's being done in Kosciuszko County. So we will be going in April to um, hear about that program and see what that looks like. So it's wrap around but in a very weird way. So there would be a caseworker who would wrap around the individual so they would understand the services that are available, but they would help them to navigate through the process with the hope that at the end of this, that they would be self-sufficient. <coughs> very well in Kosciuszko County. Um, I watched a video that the Community Foundation there, they supported the effort, um, and they shared about how they had had success with that and had funded that. So super interesting and exciting so kind of a different concept Brian Johnson's very excited about that just talked to him about that this morning so we will meet the Fulton County Hope Board will go to where that service is together in partnership with the Community Foundation research that bring it back to our team and ask the questions of the service providers at a quarterly meeting what does that look like continue to have conversations they may decide to do a steering committee to research that and find a solution so um, number four uh, we, <clears throat> I have been asked, an honor to be on the Beeman Home Board um, for Kosciuszko County as the Fulton County representative. Uh, Berger was the one that asked to have this specific project put on the list. We have um, families and individuals who are struggling with domestic violence. And we do have the partnership with Beeman Home but there's some challenges in using that facility. So on March 15th, myself, the board, potentially Trent, you guys are also invited um, to go to the Beeman Homes um, as the Beeman Home is having their strategic planning session. Tell me that date one more time. March 15th. Okay. We, will be, uh, we are on their agenda at 12.30 to share Fulton County's uh, concerns and needs. And then the Beeman Home board will take us on a tour of the facility and then um, two separate activities will happen the Fulton County Post board will come back present that as well to our folks here continue to research and then the beam at home will present it to their board do a strategic plan to see what that looks like in meeting the needs we have struggled with transporting people over to the beam home beam and home has outpatient um, services that a lot of individuals could partake in but some of the folks in Fulton County aren't able to go there every day to take a part of that so we want to understand what it looks like to meet expectations for folks to help to address that in the community um, and then if you go to the second page um, communication methods always a lot more challenging than expected so we um, continue to struggle with our Gmail that loves to bounce back and say that we are spam to everyone so we don't know if everybody is actually receiving our emails when we have our quarterly meetings we are looking at ways to address that whether it be sending things out with MailChimp um, etc also we are finalizing our website so it'll be fully um, able to be used there's a nice little um, flip book for the resource guide up there so you can see it and print it off um, as well as we are um, printing another batch of our um, brochures because they're already gone that was a thousand brochures that went quickly like that so um, looking at that and then uh, last but not least on that list is the service provider fair instead of us actually having a separate fair which we used to have there you were so gracious to let us host it 
Um, we are now partnering with an <coughs> already, already existing event, the Nickel Plate, and having a booth there. So two things not on this list, um, because they came about separate, is we finally heard back from IUK, okay. and they are putting together a um, survey. So the um, Transpo did a survey, but just of writers. We uh, met with Doug Beller and the group there and asked them what would it look like if we understood the full need for transportation. So Doug and his group agreed to allow us to put a survey out for all of the community. So we will have that hopefully complete, Lord willing, by Wednesday, this Wednesday when we have our service provider meeting. And that survey will ask questions of elected officials, community members, pastors, posing the questions, do we have effective transportation for work? Asking employers, do you have all, are there any employees who you could obtain if there were transportation opportunities? So just asking thoughtful and good questions that the students from IUK have been putting together for the last couple months so we can understand the full uh, impact of the lack of transportation and hopefully get an understanding and decide whether that can be addressed through transpo, obtaining additional grants, or if we need to talk about it in a bigger capacity. So, um, and then last but not least, um, Gail has requested that we help her to talk about the warming um, stations, homelessness, so we will be hosting a, leader, a meeting of the pastors on March 4th at six o'clock on Council of Aging. You guys are invited, we're going to provide food. And we will be discussing with the pastor some of the needs that we see in the community, including homelessness and warming, to see if we can uh, engage them to help us to address some of these issues, specifically homelessness and warming, um, with our faith community. So lots of things that we are working to try to address and partner with the county and others on. Um, but we're excited to execute this next two years and see what the future holds with addressing some of the issues that have come from our research with our partners and our service providers. So very good. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? questions for you? Yeah. <laughs> Joyce Sartman. Um, it sounds like you have your hands full. Hats off to you for that. But one of the comments you made at the beginning was that our suicide rates and some of our other categories are on the rise. Do you guys ever analyze to what what is triggering that in our community that they're on the rise right now? Or is that just something you're trying to take care of because they are on the rise? So Fulton County Hope has not analyzed that. So we have a partnership to provide awareness to us. We do have a mental health professional who sits on the board who advises <coughs> us on specific subjects that have come to their attention. <coughs> so of course the help, Becky Clark, who works with a lot of people in the room. She is, she may have statistics, but um, she felt that it was alarming enough because she also manages the crisis line for Fulton County. Mm -hmm. And she has called out on quite a few crisis calls addressing issues where individuals are struggling mentally, whether that's uh, depression or anxiety. And some of those have not ended well, according to what she advises the board on. So okay. if you're really interested, I can connect you with Becky. But you know, Becky is the professional that is there at Forcing okay. Health, and she gives us that information to be able to make decisions on. So thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Great. Amy, thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Do I have anybody here from the first department? Okay. Um, department updates. We'll start back there in the back of John Highway Department. Thank you, John. Thank you.
this driveway that he's going to put in will be 400 feet north of the intersection of 75 west and 150 south. He's going to put in a 250 foot uh, driveway entrance with an eight foot culvert, or eight inch culvert. Eight foot three foot. Pretty big culvert. A lot of water running down there. And you're a good 30, John, you look yeah. at it. Yeah. And you're doing most of the proof of it, 24-5 for Gary Case. So we have a second. All favor? Motion carries through you. Next one I have is permit request 24-7. Uh, NIPSCO is requesting to uh, install a driveway at Grass Creek NIPSCO gas facility on 1100 West at 11023 West, 900 South. Uh, this proposed driveway is 100 feet south of the intersection um, of 900 south and would be 75 feet uh, and it's going to take a culvert. It's not an 8 foot culvert either. Okay. It'll be about an 8 inch culvert. <laughs> Again, you see that and you're going to take a yeah. They're going to close that other drive up, start to open here? I think they're going to leave the other one open. Uh, problem they're going to take <coughs> the other one is some of the large rigs and stuff that they're pulling in. They can't make that okay. turn. Okay. okay. Right here, 10 motion approved. Permit 24 7. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. First, bring up to date. Uh, you guys have been uh, operating the brush cutter. Uh, of course, they're dealing with winter, uh, which hasn't been very much. Had a little bit this weekend. Um, cutting uh, trees with our AMC, patching all the stone. Uh, and then uh, we started today, uh, we're working on Old 31 South, uh, changing culverts. We've got about 11 of them. We're going to change. Uh, we just let that out uh, here in January for a repaving project with Pin and Brown. And uh, we've got a lot of culverts to change before they paid that. So we're trying to get all those changed to take advantage of the good weather. So the next week, week and a half, we're we'll changing a lot of pipes on that road, uh, giving them a chance to settle and stuff before they paid. So people will probably be, um, you know, inconvenienced for a few days. But you mentioned you're done. Yeah. Yep. So, we're going to do that and change a lot of signs and try to cut some brush and saw it out right here in the next month or so. so there's a lot of activity in that road here coming up. Uh, anyway, um, moving on to ADA Title VI. Uh, so on the 29th of February, we're going to have training for all the department heads in here in this room at 10 o'clock. Uh, Christine and I and USI are going to train on the department heads and then each department head will go back to their department, train their staff, uh, and that'll give us compliance uh, through the new transition plan. And just everybody will sign off in the county, all the employees in the county. Uh, March 1st, uh, Fulton County will receive a drafted plan for the transition plan. This is all within that update. We're trying to update the transition plan. Uh, you'll receive a drafted plan for the transition plan and then from March 1st to the 18th we'll have uh, time for public comment on that draft and then on the 29th uh, of March uh, that's when we'll uh, turn in the authorized forms uh, for that and then April 1st We'll have a public hearing at your commissioner's meeting uh, to approve the, and adopt the plans. And then if there's any uh, modifications, we'll have the April 15th uh, to make those corrections. So we'll turn it in the end on, then we'll be in compliance. Uh, that's what's going on with that. Uh, I sent you this morning a copy of an LPA consulting contract. Uh, this is from Bridge uh, 161. Did you get a chance to look at it for all? Yes, I got it. And all of a sudden, Good. did you do something different? I have. Okay. 
maybe Josh has. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But uh, anyway, this is for Bridge 161. Uh, we'll be letting that this fall. But this is for construction inspection on that. Uh, that was part of the <coughs> original letter uh, bid on that when we selected the consultant for that. Uh, but this is not to exceed $205,000. USI. Uh, it's the yellow tab there is where it needs signature. Basically, just a standard boiler freight contract from the state, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing too fancy with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another day, we're going to approve the LPA consultant contract with uh, USI. So, uh, second. Any questions for anybody? All in favor? Well, I was up here tonight. Uh, and Marty and Joyce Sartman are up here. They're here tonight. I wanted to talk to you about Iowa Lake Road. Uh, inadvertently, my guys kind of upset them last week. I uh, cut some trees. <laughs> done that I told Marty at that time that if I ever went in there and cut again I'd let him know um, and I told the guys that at that time uh, the guys went in there and I didn't know it and they cut I think three trees out there that they thought was bad I sent you some pictures of them I think they were worse shape than what Marty and Joyce knew they've got some pictures if you want to look at it but uh, anyway I think they want to talk to you about those tonight, so I'll give them a chance to talk if they want. Those trees are in, they're in the county, right? The county well, county. yeah, uh, I did some research on that, and the right of way for Niona Lake Road, all the way from Niona Lake out to State Road 25, it's it's not right of way. It's well, it is right of way, but it's it's actually owned by the county. Yeah, in fact property that we're talking about was purchased in 1938 by the state and then the state had plans of making a state road out through there and there was going to be one state road 114 and then in 1976 the state gave up that idea and then deeded it over to the county so you actually have about 70 foot right of way through there that you own and it's the north-south section where you have the island in the middle of the road and trees. Yeah. So people know where, where we're at here. So. Yeah. yeah, that's the area that we're talking about right now. Yeah. That's so. okay. okay. I'll just stand here sure. since John's there. <laughs> um, everything John said is correct. And what you just presented as far as... Uh, where the tree split the road. Uh, been there my lifetime. And uh, my uncle actually owned the ground around it. We used to run cattle down through that road. So over the years, my wife and I have just tried to preserve that. Um, many uh, residents along Mount Lake, uh, we all mow the roadside just to keep it up looking nice. And, I guess for no other reason than, you know, when the Niona Lake restaurant was open, a lot of people traveled that road. Uh, long story short, uh, I had mentioned to John when I talked with him on the phone that uh, I guess the request that we would have, and he had told me that he wouldn't do anything without you guys' blessing, but uh, even though it was done mistakenly, I guess, you know, from our standpoint, just to help preserve that area. Uh, when they came in and done the cutting, if you drove down there, or Dave might have noticed they, they left some ruts, not deep ruts, but some ruts in that area around the trees that they cut. So I guess our request would be, if possible, that uh, 
we get a couple loads of dirt. Uh, we'd like to have the uh, stumps removed completely, you know, chipped, chomped, whatever we call it, uh, and then furnish us some trees and we'll do the rest. So that's our request and I, I'm praying that John's willing to do that with your blessing because that's what he told me that he wouldn't you know spend any money doing anything extra but <laughs> I guess in my world you know the trees that they cut they're to me there might have been one that maybe needed to be cut but the I the irony is if you looked at the three trees across right across the road almost Two of them, the tops had fell, of, fell out of them last summer and they come down and clean the tops up and, and they left them standing. And I can almost guarantee that those three trees were in more shape than the three that they cut. So that's our request. I'm just praying that you're open to that. And uh, again, just for preservation. My, my uncle loved that area. And I showed Dave a picture of what it was back in the 70s and 80s because there was there was close to 30 trees down through there, and they were beautiful maples. So um, that's our request. It, you guys have done a nice job now. It. it is really it's a neat road to drive. Yes, you know it's. Uh, I'll give you that. I'm we think sure. so. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's neat. So Dave, well, and then uh, I know we had we've looked into uh, we've got 20. Maple trees, right, John? Get hold of? Very possibly. Yes. And I get a hold of uh, ten white oaks. Get upwards to thirty trees. I know we discussed it. I don't think we can do. We don't have a chipper, and we don't have any. We have a way to get rid of the the stumps, John. I know we have to cut them down to there. And I know if you look at. The <coughs> and the ones that were cut there what four or five years ago, right? They're yeah, still working, almost <laughs> gone. Right. Yeah, they're right. Uh, and they can't replant back on top of them. So, <coughs> right. whether to leave the stumps, plant the trees in and around in those areas, and I don't know about the dirt, uh, we get to the trees to replant. We'd still uh, like to request the dirt. Yeah, uh, because don't you some dirt, dirt, some dirt you can use to I, I would not want to put the trees there without extra dirt right. because it has been hollowed we out. Can, we can try to get some good black dirt and, and put it there. I don't I, I don't want to tell you I have good black dirt right now. If we do, we break it down. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because I, I don't want to bring the junk dirt. Okay. Uh, That's fair. But as soon as we would get good black dirt, we would bring it down. Okay. And then the other thing I'd just like to say, I know he said his uncle and him, but somebody who lives around there, I have seen like people continually drive those trees on a nightly in the morning and they do their walking around it. I mean, and you guys used to have it on your website, that area. So it's just something that the community has enjoyed and and uh, we've tried to maintain it so it would be a place of a place for the county. So anyway, yes, we would I like your help if that's possible. Well I, I think so we're, we're gonna do what we can. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll get some dirt. Sounds like it sounds like right. Dave got the trees. Yeah, we got the trees. So we can get some get dirt and all we'll have is a little labor in it to help, you know. Go down there. I'd, I'd be fine with that. Other than we probably ain't gonna be able to check the stops if we, as long as we cut them off level with the ground and okay. you know maybe put a little dirt on top of them or get them as, as good as we can. But get ready to dig some. Yeah, we're pretty tough. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. The only other thing I had tonight was uh, just to ask for your blessing to go to road school. John and I will road school in March. Oh, yes. Thank you. It's your turn in the travel request. I'll bless your guest later. I'll go be a blizzard. Yeah.
inmates. Um, 30 of those were Wabash County inmates. 14 were federal. In January we invoiced for roughly 67,000 for housing out of county inmates. <clears throat> I took a look at the uh, fund for the uh, bond reduction today. There's a little over, it's 551,000 total of inmate housing. Uh, 315 came in last year. So of the 551, 385,000 is in the bond reduction. 82,000 is an operational maintenance, respectively. Any questions on any of those numbers? I appreciate you looking at us. Yeah, thank you. Um, I emailed out reports this morning. Do you guys have any questions or anything on those collections? Or, it was a pretty benign month. It wasn't anything super exciting, so we like that. Um, Deputy Jay Salientes began his eight week at the academy today. He's halfway done. Looking to graduate April 19th. What was that name again? Jay Salientes. Okay. Um, deputy Rick Oder will begin later on this week as a special deputy school resource officer for Rochester Community School Corporations. Um, our current school resource officer, Deputy Scott, will train Utter in the school throughout the end of the school year. Um, and then he'll transition back onto the road. And then it'll be all uh, Deputy Utters and I'll be the th third Utter we've got. So. Trying to keep track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll have to figure out what his nickname is because we've got nicknames for the other ones. So. <laughs> I can help you on that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, background checks are wrapping up for the four applicants um, that passed the uh, written physical test on January 3rd. Um, from there, then we'll do interviews and hopefully have somebody in the next 30 days or so to, to present. So, um, JCAT program uh, started week seven this week. We've got two females in there and they are scheduled to graduate on March 28th. Um, we did receive an insurance settlement for the uh, rec tours that was uh, hit out on 31 last month. Um, $10,000 roughly minus the uh, deductible. Uh, but the insurance company is going to go after the other insurance company for the deductible. So we'll see how that one pans out. So um, unfortunately on that, I, I talked to you guys earlier about that. We lost a lot of equipment in that crash because of the rain and things afterwards. So um, but at some point in time, insurance will ask us, okay, what kind of equipment are we looking at? So. And then we have a Korean culture training for first responders on uh, Monday morning. So coming up. So if anybody wants to go to that, uh, just email Amber Molinar and myself will get you on the list. I'd have to look. <laughs> Nine o'clock next Monday. Yeah, it's 26 at 9 a.m. Yes, I know. Yeah, you got the 11, right? Just on the tail end. Of that, so. Good. And that's all I've got. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Jerry. Good evening. Good evening. I have a real sore Wednesday too. So it's nice to be here. Nice to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview of last year. Uh, we had 78 families we served. Um, I'm still awaiting two autopsies to be completed and the results sent back. Hopefully, I keep thinking it's going to be any time, but it just hasn't happened yet. So I'll know more once, and I can get you the final statistics and data uh, for those. So far this year, then, um, we've had nine families and eight of those were during the month of January. So it was quite busy in January. Um, this month so far, we've just had one family we've helped. And actually, I believe there was, there's only been four people passing Baldwin County this whole month so far. So that's really good. I mean, that's great. Um, wanted to let you know LEPC is coming up on March 11th. 
Um, we're going to be down at Liberty um, at the community center there. They're hosting us. There'll be an all uh, county fire meeting in addition to that. We're going to be talking about um, our uh, initial planning stages of our inaction uh, plan for uh, the, the hazardous and the things that we do to try to. We've done tabletops now. This will be in person, it'll be action, it'll be on the scene. So it's much different than what we've had before. It'll be much more exciting. So looking forward to that. Um, the, that's in the infancy stages. Um, wanted to let you know a public service announcement, the Abinabi fish fries coming up. That's on March 9th. And they do have some amazing fish there, <laughs> along with tender lines and chicken. <laughs> so just mark your calendar for that. Um, let me see. Uh, and then uh, we had our corner training board meeting about a week ago. And that was very good. We made final preparations for our uh, classes and educational uh, seminars coming up uh, in June. And we are number two in the nation, and we're moving up every year, uh, having greater attendance. I mean, some states may have 45 people, and that's all they have. And I'm, I mean, I'm real proud of how our coroners and deputies respond, and they're getting trained and uh, doing a great job with that. So, any questions on anything? Okay, I think that's it for me um, for the moment. So, just wanted to let you know that. You're welcome. It's always an honor to come and talk with everybody. Thank you. Okay, we've got uh, Gail. She's hiding. She's hiding. She's, she's ducking down. <laughs> she's not ducking very well because there's an <coughs> empty chair in front of her. She's hiding in the spot. Good evening, Gail. Good evening. A few things on the uh, communications, not much um, on that side. Uh, Travis got his radios and their program out in force. Um, all of his emergency buttons are programmed this time. And we have not received the other 30 for the fire departments yet, and those each will go to the different fire departments and be programmed to their uh, liking and their template of choice. And so um, that's yeah, it. They're working on them. I requested more IDs um, for the county um, so we can replace the other older ones um, with the fire departments going to full 800 IM. I'm going to need some more IDs. So just being patient and those have been approved and they're working on getting those accomplished. So um, with that being said, going on to EMA and obviously it's EMA week. Um, you said we'll see the bits and pieces of the interview for IDHS. Um, Dawn Sewell is here. We hired her out for the EMA. Don, you can raise your hand, stand up, whatever. But um, she is now out there Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, like Craig was. Um, when we have our meetings, uh, she'll fill in for the full 28 on, on those days when we have our meetings in the evenings and so forth and attend the uh, night meetings. So, um, glad to have you on board. Yeah. Thank you. Didn't know if she's going to make it. Okay. <laughs> is a little iffy the first couple of days, but um, she does have some prior first responder background, so she she knows the routine is just getting back on the bicycle and riding. Um, with that being said, uh, a couple weeks ago, I went down to Caston School and had a really great meeting down there, safety meeting. Um, obviously, they're needing to get on the grants. So Dave and I talked about that, uh, moving forward with some different projects. Um, also, with the EMA, we'll do a cleanup this February, uh, the 24th, this Saturday, and we have a couple of districts that are interested in that kitchen, so they will not be going to auction, and hopefully they'll take that one big five ton out there uh, with them on that as well. So, sorry, if we could just sign that over, we'll have um, you guys do that, so if you can approve that. Um, 
pending, and then I can make that paperwork. And I think, uh, Brian, you signed the last one, the president of the commissioners to exchange and move up to the <coughs> county. Um, that's we've the five done in the kitchen or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You're all right with that, right, Holly? Yeah. You need a motion for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll entertain a motion to do it's a five ton truck. It, they the, might be interested in the five ton and the kitchen, but they are definitely interested yeah. in the kitchen. There's a couple of counties that want to come and see it in a district. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. I, I just entertain a motion if we could help another county out in the district that needs some of that equipment. Uh, go ahead and sign I'll make that motion. motion. I'll second it. Any other questions for you? All in favor? Motion carries. Thanks, I don't think I have anything else. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gil. Thank you. Thanks, Gil. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Steve, Council, you had something you wanted to say? Where's Council? Where's Council? since it's in your budget? I would think so, but... Did you check on that first, please? To you guys about it first. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, you know, just 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 if we need to make it all yeah. one check, that way I think that would be... Well, but yeah, <coughs> makes it a lot easier. Instead of the reimbursements. That works. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier. And then to cut yeah. hard, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm all for not with that. So, but yeah, if it's, if it's in your council budget, then that, you know, yeah. Oh. Make sure it's all wherever yeah. we gotta do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all good. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Am I missing any other department heads? Is anybody hiding? Okay. Um, we have a few minutes here. Um, we have minutes from Monday, October 16th. 23. You guys have a chance to 
Second. All in favor? That motion carries through. Say October. October 16th of 23? Yeah. Up to date. Come on back. Okay, we have uh, November 6th of 23. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't take a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries to the in its entirety. Um, I would entertain a motion to acknowledge the minutes uh, to the best of our knowledge that they are correct. Father, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, like I said, I think we missed the first third of the meeting before they were recorded. So. Right. Okay. Entertain that motion. That being said, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Motion carries three up. We have minutes from February 5th of 24. Okay, motion to approve those. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three up. Had a chance to look over all the um, <coughs> claims, transfers, any questions, concerns. I didn't see any for me. Nothing stuck out. Okay. We have payroll for the payroll date of 2 9 of 24 of $268,354.49 with a payroll deduction of $96,283.37. An insurance claim docket for the disbursement of 12, 28, of 23, to 1, 3, of 24, of $19,468.01. Okay, we have an insurance claim docket for the disbursements of 1, 4, 24, to 1, 10, of 24, of $4,943.53. Insurance claim docket for the disbursements of 111.24 to 117.24, dollars and ninety-four cents. <clears throat> Insurance claim docket for the January fees of fifty thousand six hundred and fifty dollars and seventy-three cents. Claim docket <coughs> disbursements of 118 to 124 of 24 for $6,760.83. Insurance claim docket for disbursements of 125 to 131 of 24, $8,307.53. Insurance claim docket for February fees, $50,000. $991.91. An insurance claim docket for disbursements of 2 1 to 2 7 24, $38,800.60. We have uh, February 19th miscellaneous claims, $355,000. $362.76. And utility claim, $19,189.57. Another insurance 
insurance claim docket for disbursements of 28 to 214 of 24, $4,224.21. Furniture of nineteen thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars and ninety five cents. That's for tables and chairs and some stuff for the judges down in the first floor of the place. Okay. We have a transfer request from the, for the annex building here, the building from building and repair to furniture of seven thousand eight hundred and ninety nine dollars and four cents. That's for conference tables and chairs for a small conference room over here. It's been needed for many years. We have a transfer request from the commissioners, building another insurance of $25,000 to contractual services. Pay for the river strategic services contract. Stoppers for two thousand dollars. Chancellor Google travel travel authorization for us. Yep. Is it okay with everything? Um, yeah. This uh, exact rivers budget. Okay. okay. All right. Um, old business. I just have a quick update on the uh, security. I am waiting on a form to not be signed from the attorney. The insurance company to sign that. Christina Harris has sent them all the uh, addresses via email addresses and uh, spam mail addresses so that those will be able to go out. Um, the trans union is going to be the most economical. They're, they're both about the same money, uh, about 2500 The trans union, if there is a um, an alert that they will send out to the individuals without email via mail. Mail. Yeah. mail. Right. So, uh, San Francisco address. Yeah. So we're I just received some of that information here about four o'clock this afternoon. So we're I'm just waiting on that document to sign that we approved last week. So um, that's all I had for business. I didn't have any. <coughs> Brian, with the emails, I'm sorry, with the emails, will they be able to utilize the personal emails if they don't have account email? Well, whatever email was on file with an employee hired right. in is what Christina uh, HR has. Okay. So that's what that's what we sent. Okay. So uh, I guess you need to change some of them. I'm just I'm thinking of some of our jail employees. We don't we don't provide county emails to all of them because yeah. of the turnover it was just getting too much. So but, but if they if they put an they email, email address. Address. that's okay. what she that's what she submitted. So okay. Thank you. Yeah there's two hundred and 
Okay. Today. Some of them wanted actual mail. They didn't have an email, so it's, if any of yours is the same way, make sure. Okay. I mean, she put together a list. So. Okay. All right. Uh, Chantal, old business. Old business from the public. New business. I have that. Public new business. Sure. I have some breaking news that I want to share with you, and I thought maybe somebody else was going to mention it, but I won't mention it. I'm really proud to tell you about it. Um, our EMA is being spotlighted um, across the state. They've selected a select few, and uh, <coughs> Gail has led and made it. We're evolving, and we're constantly evolving and getting better and stronger. I just wanted to let you know that. She's led with her enthusiasm, her passion, uh, positivity, and energy. And I got to tell you, we've got a volunteer group. We're one of the biggest in the state. We've got about 24 people in it. We got room for others if anybody would like to do it. And there's a diverse interest uh, that you, I mean, it's not just a small piece, but you can do anything from storm spotting. There's training for that. I'm assisting with traffic control. Like we can go out and help Travis when he directs us to, or Andy Schatz or whoever, wherever it's needed. Um, assessment for damage taking pictures and things like that if there's a storm that happens to hit our county uh, going around to see if we can help people um, and we document that uh, we've got several people that are signed in now under the American Red Cross so we're doing that um, so there's safety we're trying to keep everybody safe and we're trying to help people so if you got a patient at heart and you want to help people we'd love to have you in the group and I want you to know that we are among the best in Indiana so led by Gail and Dawn. So round of applause for those guys. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to let you know, because I know they're shy and don't want to talk, and I'm kind of shy too, but I just, oh, I was to the same to tell you that. <laughs> I was dying to tell you that, so thank you. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Gail. Kudos out to Gail, everybody else, all the volunteers. You've done a fantastic job. Appreciate it. And I got to tell you, the people are all different ages. They're in every decade of you know 20s, 30s, 40s. So that's what makes it so great. And everybody's got something different to think about or focus on, and we're there as a team to help others. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Did I miss anybody? It's now time for public. I just have yeah. questions. Yeah. State your name. Uh, my name is Timothy Kittiger. Um So uh, my big question is, I'm part of the Fulton County Leadership Academy through the Purdue Annex. Um, myself and uh, my partner here, Christian Singleton, are looking into possibly uh, wanting to get some sort of like, green space or amphitheater, just do something with the old jail, uh, or yeah, old jail plot. But before we got to invest in and really started hammering out plans, we were just wondering what kind of plans the county had for it, or uh, if there was a path that we could pursue to get something done there. Well, I, I mean, we have no plans for it except for future expansion of the county of need. Uh, but I guess what, what I would suggest if you have a plan or an idea, if you want to pencil something together, bring a presentation to us, and that way, you know, we can look at it and see what it takes and if it fits into the, the community and what's going on. So, I mean, you guys, yeah, fit, yeah, you know? well, yeah, just so we had a, just you know. Give me a heads up, I'll give you my email address after or something, and uh, just shoot an email, I'll get you on the agenda, and, and you can present something to us. That'd be great. great. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Anybody else? I do got one thing. We got some young ladies and gentlemen out here. Welcome. Glad to see you guys show up. Anything you want to say? Brian didn't tell you, but you got to give a five or ten minute speech. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of wait to see if I uh, know. No, just kidding. Uh, you guys got anything you want to questions or anything you want to ask or anything well thank you for coming just, i wasn't trying to scare you all <laughs> <laughs> just here learning how about how local government operates great to have you thank you for coming
Yeah. 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 Yeah.